Come on, you can tell me. I tell you, I don't know. Ever wonder how Hollywood's glitz and glamour meet the scandalous secrets of its biggest stars? Check out these 20 incredible stories from Hollywood. And welcome back to Vintage TV. Oh, what's that? Closing time. The bums rush and melody, dear. Number 20. Rita Hayworth. Rita Hayworth was not your typical leading lady of Hollywood's golden age. Beneath her glamorous exterior was a life filled with turmoil and scandal. What set her apart was her innate shyness in contrast to her bold personas. Hayworth's personal life was filled with a sea of alcoholism and relationships with domineering personalities. No matter if she married film directors or royalty, her marriages often spiraled into shouting matches and prolonged legal battles. What made her story even more intriguing was how one troubled relationship would seamlessly blend into another, leaving a trail of messy entanglements. As the years went by, the toll of stress and alcohol began to show on Hayworth. Premature aging became evident, but what was even more tragic was the early onset of Alzheimer's disease, robbing her of her memory. By the time she reached her 50s, she struggled to memorize lines and spent her final days in a New York apartment, her memory fading along with her once substantial bank account. Rita Hayworth's life was filled with scandal and heartache, and it's just the beginning of our journey through Hollywood's most scandalous personalities. Number 19. Elizabeth Taylor what sets Elizabeth Taylor apart is not just her eight marriages, but the sheer drama that accompanied each one. It was as if she had a knack for finding herself in the middle of a love hurricane. Yet she always managed to pick up the pieces and dive into something even more tumultuous. Her first marriage to Conrad Hilton, yes, the Conrad Hilton of Mad Men fame, was marred by gambling, excessive drinking, and abusive behavior. But that was just the beginning of her dramatic journey through matrimony. Her fourth marriage began in scandalous fashion when Eddie Fisher, who was then married to Debbie Reynolds, consoled Taylor following the tragic death of her third husband. This notorious affair rocked Hollywood and added another layer to Taylor's scandalous legacy. However, it was her legendary and incredibly tumultuous relationship with Richard Burton that truly defined her love life. Not once, but twice did they say, I do. And not once, but twice did they endure a messy divorce. Their love affair was passionate, volatile, and headline-making. Despite Taylor's naturally poor health and her well-documented addiction to painkillers and sleeping pills that spanned half of her life, she managed to defy the odds and lived to almost 80 years old. Number 18. Jean Tierney a true A-lister of the 1940s. Her life was like a page from a Hollywood script filled with sensational affairs that could rival any scandalous love story. Tierney's romantic escapades resembled something out of a sexual Forrest Gump, with a list of rumored paramours that included John F. Kennedy, Howard Hughes, and actor Tyrone Power. But that was just the beginning of her dramatic love life. She was initially married to fashion designer Ole Cassini, but her heart soon led her into the arms of oil man W. Howard Lee, shortly after his divorce from actress Hedy Lamarr. The love triangles and scandalous affairs were just part of her glamorous lifestyle. However, beneath the glitz and glamour, Tierney grappled with a severe battle against bipolar disorder, which led her to erratic mood swings and eventually her commitment to a mental institution. In 1953, encouraged by Humphrey Bogart, Tierney sought treatment, but it was far from a smooth journey. She attempted to escape the asylum after enduring over two dozen shock treatments. Several years later, Tierney's life took another dramatic turn when she walked out onto a ledge 13 stories above the ground and stood there for a chilling 15 minutes. Although she made a return to acting in the 60s and 70s, her career never quite reached the heights it had previously. Number 17. Marilyn Monroe Next, we look at the life of one of Hollywood's most iconic and enduring sex symbols, Marilyn Monroe. Her name alone conjures up images of glamour, sensuality, and of course, scandal. Marilyn wasn't just linked romantically to fellow actors. She had relationships with luminaries in nearly every field of her day. 
her tempestuous relationships with Joe DiMaggio, John F. Kennedy, and playwright Arthur Miller are well documented and remain the stuff of legends. Marilyn was not just a Hollywood beauty, she was also the very first Playboy cover girl, a milestone that showcased her captivating allure. However, behind the dazzling smile and sultry persona, Marilyn had her fair share of demons. Her life was marred by a tumultuous combination of drug addiction and psychological struggles, leading some historians to speculate that she may have been schizophrenic. And while Jackie Kennedy may have turned a blind eye to many of JFK's indiscretions, the media frenzy surrounding Monroe's high-profile affair with the president proved to be a breaking point. Tragically, it's believed that Kennedy's eventual rejection of her fueled a downward spiral into alcohol and pill addiction that ultimately led to her untimely and mysterious death. Stay tuned as we uncover more secrets of Hollywood's most scandalous personalities. Number 16. George Reeves Long before the internet dominated discussions about who should play our favorite comic book heroes, George Reeves was the face of Superman on TV in the 1950s. But despite the Man of Steel's invincibility, Reeves himself met a tragic end. In a twist that would make even Superman raise an eyebrow, George Reeves' downfall came not from kryptonite, but from hot lead. Now, getting shot doesn't necessarily make you a bad boy but it's the circumstances around his death that make this story scandalous. Reeves made headlines when he left his longtime mistress, Tony Mannix, who was married to MGM executive Eddie Mannix. He then became engaged to the notorious party girl, Leonore Lemon, known for her volatile temperament, including shooting guns around the house for seemingly no reason. Here's where it gets really interesting. Eddie Mannix was no ordinary executive. He was known as Hollywood's fixer, someone who could make problems go away, and not in a good way. Rumor had it that he didn't mind if you slept with his wife, as long as you didn't make her mad. Reeves' death was officially ruled a suicide, but the investigation was marred by suspicious circumstances. Lemon entered the house while it was still a crime scene. Reeves' autopsy was botched, and the eyewitness accounts were unreliable. With a tangled web of connections, including Eddie, Tony, Leonor, and various associates, there were just too many suspects to count. While the official cause of death remains suicide, many still speculate that he may have been murdered. Number 15. Gary Cooper Let's move on to the life of a Hollywood legend, Gary Cooper, whose biography reads like a never-ending list of leading ladies and scandalous affairs. It seems that every time he starred in a movie, he quickly began an affair with his co-star, and this pattern repeated itself dozens of times. Cooper faced stiff competition for the title of the biggest womanizer in Hollywood history. Rumors swirled that he had liaisons with every one of his co-stars, and that includes fellow cast members like Clara Bow and Lupe Velez. One of his most infamous affairs was with the iconic Marlena Dietrich while he was still dating Velez. This ignited a bitter feud between the two actresses, with Velez insisting on being on set with Cooper and Dietrich at all times. It got so heated that she even tried to shoot Cooper once she felt her suspicions were confirmed. But Cooper's romantic escapades didn't stop there. He continued to bed his co-stars, and even Tallulah Bankhead famously said, quote, The only reason I went to Hollywood was to F that divine Gary Cooper. While many of the women on this list faced harsh scrutiny from the press and studios, Cooper managed to escape relatively unscathed. He was often painted as a reformed and admired member of society, even though he continued to have affairs. Perhaps one of his lowest moments came when, at age 47, he had an affair with his 21-year-old co-star Patricia Neal and insisted she have an abortion. Shockingly, not even this seemed to harm his career. Number 14. Marion Davies Imagine a love triangle involving two of the most iconic figures in Hollywood history, Charlie Chaplin and William Randolph Hearst. Well, that's precisely what happened, and it all revolved around one woman, Marion Davies. Hearst, the inspiration for Charles Foster Kane in Citizen Kane, and Chaplin, the legendary silent film star, 
both had romantic entanglements with Davies. Hurst, in particular, was deeply smitten with her. He couldn't marry her because his wife wouldn't consent to a divorce without a substantial financial settlement. Still, Davies remained Hurst's number one in his heart, which occasionally ignited his infamous jealous rages. Now, how did the showdown between Chaplin and Hurst play out? The details are a bit hazy, but we know it ended in the death of director William Ince. Strangely, no one was ever tried for this crime, and the official cause of death was listed as heart condition. The exact sequence of events remains a mystery, but there are two popular theories. Some believe that Ince was mistakenly shot, thinking that he was Chaplin, while others suggest he was accidentally shot as Hearst attempted to take down Chaplin. Given Hearst's immense influence and the secrecy surrounding the cruise where this occurred, witnesses were understandably reluctant to come forward, leaving the mystery unsolved to this day. Number 13. Barbara Lamar Barbara Lamar lived a life filled with drama both on and off the screen. She was no stranger to controversy, starting with her first marriage at the age of 17, which took place shortly after her first arrest for performing burlesque at just 14 years old. Lamar became a fixture on the Hollywood club scene during her short life and was romantically linked to a variety of men, including dancer Robert Hobday and Arizona rancher Jack Littell. But the parade of men in her life wasn't enough excitement for Lamar. She reportedly only slept two hours a night and battled a heroin addiction throughout her adult years. Her wild lifestyle eventually caught up with her. Tragically, Barbara Lamar's life was cut short at the age of 29 when she succumbed to tuberculosis. Stay tuned for more shocking tales from the golden age of Hollywood. Number 12. Lupe Velez Lupe Velez, known as the Mexican Spitfire, may have found great success in her professional life, but her personal life was filled with plenty of scandals and tumult. This fiery actress was linked romantically to a who's who of the golden age of Hollywood, including Clark Gable, Charlie Chaplin, Errol Flynn, and Gary Cooper. Yes, the same one she shot at. Jealousy seemed to be a recurring theme in Velez's relationships. When she discovered Clark Gable's affair with Marlena Dietrich, she didn't hold back, threatening to rip out Dietrich's eyes given the chance. But Lupe Velez was just as fierce about protecting her career as she was about her love life. Her primary rival, Dolores Del Rio, was afraid of meeting Lupe in person due to her biting and aggressive public behavior. As she entered her mid-30s, rumors swirled about a pregnancy involving a married man and it all became too much for Velez. In a tragic turn of events, she took her own life by overdosing on sleeping pills. Number 11. Jean Harlow A blonde bombshell of the sound era, she was no stranger to scandal from a young age. She shocked society by marrying an older man at the tender age of 16. And by the age of 17, she was already posing nude, an early rebel who could give today's Disney stars gone wild they run for their money. But her youthful escapades were just the prelude to the sensational drama that would follow. In 1932, just two months after their wedding, Harlow's husband Paul Byrne tragically took his own life under suspicious circumstances. He was found in his apartment with a gun in his hand and a note. The news was a huge scandal. Harlow stayed quiet about it other than telling the police that she was at her mother's place the night of the incident. MGM, the actress's studio, was quick to cover the case. Research later showed that it was possible that Byrne did not take his own life. Despite her tumultuous life, Harlow's own passing was far less sensational than the tabloids might have predicted. She died in a rather mundane manner from complications of influenza, in sharp contrast to her life of drama. Number 10. Fatty Arbuckle Few comedic big men in Hollywood history have possessed the talent and fame of Fatty Arbuckle. With his impeccable comedic timing, the grace of a dancer, and a wonderful singing voice, he was the complete package, albeit in a plus-sized frame. However, even someone as talented as Arbuckle couldn't escape the merciless grip of yellow journalism. 
If you think today's stars have it rough with tabloids, imagine dealing with the likes of William Randolph Hearst's newspapers back in the day. Arbuckle was known to enjoy a good party, and by party, we mean alcohol and morphine-fueled benders. While he was, by all accounts, a peaceful man, a combination of his alcoholism and being in the wrong place at the wrong time would soon unravel his life. On September 5, 1921, Arbuckle and some friends rented three hotel rooms for a night of revelry and debauchery. By the end of the night, Virginia Rappé, an aspiring actress, had tragically lost her life. While evidence showed that Fatty hadn't engaged in any inappropriate behavior with the woman beyond casual contact, the newspapers led by Hearst ran wild with the story. In no time, the scandalous narrative emerged that Arbuckle had violently raped Ms. Rappé with a Coca-Cola bottle. Despite evidence heavily favoring Arbuckle's innocence, he endured three trials as the media's accusations grew increasingly sensationalized. Though the third trial ended with not only an acquittal, but an apology from the jury, Arbuckle's career was ruined. He sold all of his riches to pay his court fees and couldn't find meaningful work for the rest of his life. Number 9. Clark Gable When it comes to Hollywood womanizers, few can match the legendary status of Clark Gable. To put it bluntly, as one author noted, quote, Clark Gable was married five times, slept with nearly all of his co-stars, and cheated on everyone. Gable's womanizing tendencies were evident from the very beginning of his career, which began with an unexpected liaison in Portland, Oregon. A young Clark Gable had a romantic encounter with a theater manager 17 years his senior, setting off a trend of sugar mama relationships. He quickly realized that there were plenty of women willing to foot the bill for him. Living off of the generosity of his female admirers, Gable rose to fame and secured a contract with MGM which only fueled his insatiable appetite for romance. His dalliances were so conspicuous that MGM even threatened to invoke the morality clause in his and Joan Crawford's contracts if they couldn't manage to keep their passionate escapades discreet. Despite his reputation as a notorious womanizer, women continued to flock to Gable throughout his life. In the words of Doris Day, quote, he was as masculine as any man I've ever known and as much a little boy as a grown man could be. It was this combination that had such a devastating effect on women. But one of the most scandalous episodes in Gable's love life involved actress Loretta Young, whom he met on the set of Call of the Wild. Their affair resulted in Young becoming pregnant at the age of 23, while Gable was still married to his first wife. Gable refused to acknowledge paternity and had little interest in meeting his daughter with Young who kept the child's parentage a secret throughout her life. This secret was only revealed posthumously in a memoir, and Young eventually admitted that their relationship was not consensual. It was a scandal within a scandal that continues to intrigue Hollywood history enthusiasts to this day. Number 8. Clara Bow When it comes to Clara Bow, it's often challenging to separate fact from fiction in the tales told about her. One thing that's clear is that she crossed paths with a vengeful newspaper editor who was determined to blackmail her, leading to a media frenzy that rivaled the notoriety of Miley Cyrus and Lindsay Lohan combined. The scandalous tabloid The Coast Reporter accused Bo of engaging in bestiality, incestuous relationships, and contracting various venereal diseases. While these accusations were ultimately proven false, Clara Bow did find herself involved in some rather wild situations. Bow had a long list of lovers, including an affair with a doctor who was treating her during a rehab stint. Adding to her troubles were gambling debts and issues with tax evasion, which exacerbated the financial problems that had plagued her since the early days of her career due to her father's mismanagement of her finances. Bo's greatest public downfall occurred in 1930 when her former secretary was put on trial for embezzlement. During the trial, the secretary used the witness stand as a platform to publicly condemn Bo, mixing truths with outrageous fabrications. The fallout from this trial led to Bo's early retirement from the screen when she was still in her late 20s. Number 7. Francis Farmer 
In today's era, we might throw around phrases like batshit crazy for relatively minor celebrity squabbles, but they truly find their place in the story of Frances Farmer, whose severe mental illness had a profound detrimental effect on her career from beginning to end. Shortly after making her initial mark in Hollywood, Farmer began exhibiting increasingly erratic behavior. The late 1930s and early 1940s became a tumultuous period for Farmer, marked by a series of arrests. Her troubles with the law began when she was apprehended for driving with her headlights on in a wartime blackout zone. The following year, she found herself in custody for dislocating her hairdresser's jaw. During her trial for this incident, Farmer went so far as to attack two police officers and throw an inkwell at the judge. Following a period of institutionalization, she even assaulted her own mother. After spending a decade in and out of mental institutions and during various treatments, Farmer attempted a career comeback. Unfortunately, her resurgence was short-lived, characterized by regional stage performances and arrests for drunk driving. On one occasion, she was pulled over for drunk driving after crashing her car into a ditch, addressing the arresting officer as the character she was portraying in a local theater production. Number 6. Joan Crawford Joan Crawford was never one to sit around and wait for opportunities to come knocking on her door. When Vincent Sherman was preparing for his film The Damned Don't Cry, Crawford took the initiative to invite him over to view some of her previous work and their interaction went beyond just a professional viewing. In fact, after Sherman's wife discovered the indiscretion, she is rumored to have remarked, quote, I guess it's too much to ask of any man to turn down the opportunity to sleep with Joan Crawford. Crawford's journey to Hollywood was far from easy, and she was determined to make her mark any way she could, often leveraging her feminine charm to secure better roles and more screen time. Throughout her life, Crawford had romantic relationships with Hollywood luminaries like Douglas Fairbanks Jr., Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, and countless other less famous figures in the industry. However, there was a less glamorous side to Crawford's fame. In 1978, one of her adopted children, Christina, penned a scathing memoir titled Mommy Dearest. The book portrayed Joan Crawford as a vicious, abusive, and alcoholic mother. Some of the revelations in the book included the fact that Christina was required to refer to her mother's numerous paramours as uncle, and that Joan once berated her for using wire coat hangers instead of padded ones. The book, along with accounts from those who knew her closely, painted Crawford as an intensely jealous, aging actress who often undermined her younger colleagues and displayed egotistical behavior. Her decline from fame was protracted and painful. After multiple attempts to stay relevant and numerous affairs, she spent her final days in a modest New York apartment, referring to herself as an ex-movie star. In 1923, a year before her Broadway debut and initial rise to stardom, Crawford was reportedly involved in a scandal involving a film titled The Casting Couch. The movie, as its name suggests, was essentially an adult film. Crawford, in pursuit of financial stability and fame, is said to have appeared in several adult films around that time. Although she repeatedly denied her involvement in the casting couch, historical research has revealed that she faced blackmail due to her association with the film. Number 5. Linda Darnell We might be accustomed to the sight of modern actresses facing public turmoil after attempting to change their image, but such stories are hardly a recent phenomenon. Linda Darnell, a rising star in the 1940s known for her wholesome image, embarked on a journey to reinvent herself with a more overtly sexual image, and this decision led to a downward spiral in her life and career. During her attempts at transformation, Darnell faced a severe setback when her business manager embezzled her life savings and left her in financial ruin. This unfortunate turn of events pushed Darnell into a dark period marked by alcoholism and three failed marriages. Despite her difficulties, Darnell remained a sought-after bachelorette in Hollywood and was rumored to have been romantically involved with numerous men, including Howard Hughes and Joseph L. Mankiewicz. Despite her active romantic life, Darnell's career began to wane and she struggled with bouts of depression in her final years. 
Tragically, her life came to a fiery end in 1965 when she perished in a house fire, reportedly caused by falling asleep with a lit cigarette in her hand. Number 4. Errol Flynn You've probably heard the phrase, in like Flynn, and it was practically invented for this guy. Errol Flynn, the dashing actor best known for portraying the original tights-wearing Robin Hood, had the kind of boyish good looks that could charm his way out of almost anything. Scratch that. He did charm his way out of almost anything. But let's dive into his fascinating story. Flynn's early years were marked by his use of charm for no good. He was expelled from school multiple times, including once for the scandalous act of, quote, betting a laundress. Fame only fueled his appetite for booze and women. Once he hit the big time, he engaged in a slew of extramarital affairs while still being married. The MGM PR department, well-versed in managing Hollywood's secrets, did their best to cover up his escapades. They even had Flynn write an essay on Hollywood morality to divert attention. However, Flynn's bad boy image eventually caught up with him. In the 1940s, his behavior took a nosedive. He famously slapped a gossip columnist, made secretive trips to Mexico, and was rumored to have an interest in underage girls. He faced a trial on two counts of statutory rape, managing to beat the charges, though the evidence appeared damning. Despite this, Flynn continued his debauchery, succumbing to alcoholism and contracting various venereal diseases, which reportedly rendered him unfit for military service. As the years passed, Flynn's reckless lifestyle took a real toll on his health. He battled hepatitis, liver failure, and eventually transitioned to television acting, making a significant decline from his once great Hollywood career. Back in that day, television was seen as a refuge for actors whose careers had hit rock bottom. Number 3. Mabel Norman Ever hear the saying, be an accessory to murder once, shame on me? Be an accessory to murder twice? Well, Mabel Norman seemed to have a knack for ending up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Either that or being around her was simply synonymous with being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Norman was a wildly successful comedian, sharing the screen and off-screen adventures with the likes of Fatty Arbuckle and Charlie Chaplin. She was also a director, writer, and producer, but she shared Arbuckle and Chaplin's taste for trouble. In 1922, filmmaker William Desmond Taylor was found dead, but no one was charged in his murder. There's a theory that Taylor may have tried to take action against Norman's cocaine dealer and paid the ultimate price. Two years later, Norman found herself in another deadly situation while hanging out with her friend Edna Perviance and oil tycoon Cortland Dines. Perviance's chauffeur believed Edna was in trouble and ended up shooting Dines dead with Norman's gun. Although Norman was cleared of criminal charges in both cases, the combination of these scandals and her recurrent battles with tuberculosis led to her retirement from the entertainment industry at the young age of 37. Number 2. Charlie Chaplin When you think of Charlie Chaplin, the first thing that comes to mind is probably his iconic slapstick comedy, not criminal activity. However, beneath the lovable tramp persona, Chaplin had a darker side. He wasn't just into comedy. He was also a pioneer in the realm of sexual deviance. His preference for underage women is well documented as he married women aged 16, 16, and 18 during his lifetime. Chaplin and Fatty Arbuckle were said to have organized elaborate Hollywood orgies. Chaplin also played a role in pioneering the notorious casting couch method, where he would engage in sexual acts with actresses during auditions. But it didn't stop at that. Chaplin subjected them to some bizarre and degrading activities. Film historian Kevin Browning revealed that Chaplin would communicate with actresses only through caption cards and mime during auditions. He used this tactic to gradually undress them while fondling their breasts in an exaggerated, silent movie acting manner. Ultimately, he would have them stand naked while throwing custard pies at them. These revelations put today's embarrassing job interviews in a whole different perspective. Number 1. Frank Sinatra When you think of Frank Sinatra, you might envision the smooth crooner with a voice like velvet. 
But behind the scenes, Sinatra was a complex figure with a penchant for scandal and a reputation as a legendary womanizer. While his four marriages are well documented, they were just the tip of the iceberg when it came to his romantic escapades. Sinatra's name was linked with some of Hollywood's most famous leading ladies, including Judy Garland, Lauren Bacall, and Marilyn Monroe. Sinatra's life was marked by bouts of depression, which often led him down a path of alcohol and prescription pill abuse. He had a reputation for getting into fistfights, with altercations ranging from clashes with airport employees to confrontations with casino executives. But perhaps one of the most intriguing aspects of Sinatra's life was his significant ties to organized crime. To say his connections were substantial would be an understatement. The FBI had amassed nearly 2,500 pages of information on Sinatra's connections to the mob. It seems that Sinatra truly did things his way, and that way included a path of self-destruction that few stars could ever hope to match. Now you know it, the top 20 most scandalous personalities in Hollywood history. If you enjoyed this journey through the tumultuous lives of these stars, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Who's your favorite scandalous Hollywood figure? And of course, if you want more intriguing Hollywood stories and scandalous revelations, make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. Until next time, stay tuned.